Okay, here's an uncomfortable truth. Your brain did not evolve to show you reality. It evolved to lie to you repeatedly and efficiently. Welcome to part two of Everything We Know is a Lie, where we will be diving into evolution, both cultural and biological, to understand why your senses and belief are designed for survival, but not truth. But before we get into it, I just want to remind everybody that I'm not necessarily even saying that I'm speaking the truth. Obviously, I'm going to be providing sources in the description below, but I am just making educated best guesses based on the available information. And I want all of you to be be engaging with this critically rather than just taking my word for it. And if you're wondering how to do that, go check out my The Art of Critical Thinking video. Now starting off with understanding or unpacking what evolution actually is. Evolution is the accumulation of adaptations that become sustained within a population because they allow the organism to survive and reproduce in a way that is better than its competing organisms. But evolution is often taught like this beautiful, elegant process of adaptation. But when you zoom out, it's actually incredibly brutal and lazy. And that's because nature is the ultimate minimalist. It doesn't care about truth, it doesn't care about accuracy, nor does it care about your enlightenment. The only thing nature cares about is, will this help the organism survive and reproduce? And that one question has shaped everything you perceive and believe. So let's start with the basics. Your eyes not designed to show you reality. Your ears, not designed to detect all sound. All five of our senses are actually massive reductions of what we're experiencing in the world around us. Evolution has shaped these senses to be just good enough to help with our survival and reproduction and absolutely nothing more. And so while our senses do a pretty good job of allowing us to navigate the world around us, they're still missing out a huge part of the picture. You don't see x-rays, gamma rays, microwaves, or radio waves. Your brain instead carves out this tiny sliver of the spectrum because that tiny sliver prevented your ancestors from dying. Another example is that color is entirely manufactured by your brain. There actually is no such thing as color in the real world. Objects don't have color, they reflect wavelengths. Your brain then turns those wavelengths into colors because it's useful, not because it's real. Even when we're seeing an object, its depth, its motion, its size, all of that is pure computation. So you're not really seeing objects, you're seeing a 3D hallucination that your brain has pieced together. And this isn't even just theory anymore. One of the top cognitive scientists, Donald Hoffman, actually ran hundreds of evolutionary simulations, finding that organisms that had evolved to see the truth or see the world as it actually was, almost always went extinct. Conversely, the organisms that were only evolved enough to see that of which was directly relevant for their survival and reproduction or their evolutionary fitness, they always won out. So essentially, the takeaway that I took from this was that evolution does not give a damn about truth. It cares about survival, and truth is just energetically expensive. And there's so many great examples of optical illusions that actually prove this as well. Your brain is essentially always filling in the gaps and using predictive processing to assume what is there. So to follow on from that, neuroscience tells us that the brain doesn't even wait for sensory input. It makes predictions, guesses, and models, and then checks the world to see whether or not they agree. So rather than like seeing reality, we're essentially just generating this controlled hallucination that has been curated for energy efficiency and usefulness. And now this is the part of the series where we start to realize nothing we experience is raw. Everything is filtered which really does back up a lot of the things we were talking about in that philosophy first part. But biological evolution, especially that of humans, did not happen in a vacuum. Our cultural evolution played a huge role in where we are today. But in breaking it down, we realized that our beliefs also are selected for by survival. And that's because ideas don't just exist, they evolve. They mutate, they spread, they compete based on fitness, not truth. For example, when we look at why gender norms and money and capitalism all exist, we find that they create a stable, predictable social order, regardless of whether that social order is actually the best model out there. None of these things need to be fundamentally true, they just need to be useful. So essentially, biology gave you useful illusions, culture gave you useful constructs, but then we take those things and mistake them for reality. Now, as always, I don't just want to offer you one perspective, so I'm going to be providing some counter arguments as well. The first one would be that perception is accurate enough. People in this camp of thought would probably say something along the lines of, well, evolution favors accuracy when accuracy improves survival. For example, catching prey or avoiding predators. To that, I would say yes, but it's still simplified accuracy. And an analogy I'd like to use here is imagine you're trying to find a road to get from place A to place B. However, you're looking for that road on a globe map. 
you're never gonna find it because the globe map is not detailed enough for you to. Now imagine finding your way is finding reality and the globe is what you can actually perceive. Another counter argument and one that I actually like is that cultural evolution can increase truth. And I totally agree with this. Science so far has been our most successful truth filter, but it's still extremely new compared to the thousands and thousands of years our ancestors spent running around just trying to survive. And as it stands currently, we do not yet have the tools scientific or biological to perceive the entire scope of reality which is important to consider when we talk about electromagnetism and like the observable universe because what we can observe in the universe only accounts for like five percent of it because only roughly five percent of it is detectable by electromagnetic perception so this is probably the moment in the series where things are starting to connect because if evolution has only shaped your senses to perceive what is directly relevant for your survival then where does that leave objective reality what's left after you strip all of the the hallucinations. Now that is a question I want you to hold on to as we work through the series because I want you guys coming up with your own answers to that. I don't want to be answering it for you. I'm just sharing what I think. But so far we've talked about how evolution shapes the senses and next I want us to talk about how neuroscience shapes the self so that we can dig a little bit deeper into how your brain is actually shaping reality. Anyways, I love you guys and I'll see you next time.